Welcome back, I'm Dr. Dai, and in our last video for chapter six, we're gonna be looking at prokaryotic cell division. Uh, bacteria and other prokaryotes reproduce through binary fission, which is the primary method for generating new individuals in unicellular organisms. Um, in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes, cell division results in two identical daughter cells. Um, they're, they're genetically identical. Those chromosomes have been copied perfectly if everything went right. Um, in unicellular organisms, these daughter cells are considered individuals. Right? They are, this is their form of reproduction. Um, to ensure the production of identical daughter cells, specific steps are, are crucial. It's really important that they go through in the right pathway. So the genetic material, the DNA, must be copied and distributed into the two daughter cells, um, and the cellular components must be divided to provide both new cells with the necessary machinery so that they can go on and do what that cell does, survive. Um, bacterial cells, you may remember, have that single circular DNA. Uh, that's their single chromosome. Um, and then they also sometimes have little plastids, which also have to be copied. But for the most part, they have just that one circular chromosome, which really simplifies the cell division process. Um, it eliminates the need for mitosis, actually, and leads to something that we call binary fission. Right? Uh, binary fission is the cell division process that's used by prokaryotes. It's simple, it's fast, uh, it allows for very rapid bacterial population growth. Um, again, that bacterial DNA is a single circular chromosome. It's located in the nucleoid, uh, it, which is that you know, it's a region. It's not an actual nucleus, right? Because prokaryotes don't have membrane-bound organelles. Um, let's see. The associated proteins necessary for um, compacting the, the chromosome are present there too. So DNA replication is gonna start near the chromosome's attachment to the cell membrane. It's kind of an interesting little feature of, of prokaryotes. Um, replication proceeds in both directions from its origin point, uh, with each origin point moving towards opposite ends of the elongating cell. As the cell lengthens, the growing membrane assists in chromosome transport, moving it along. Uh, once the chromosomes pass the midpoint, the cytoplasmic separation begins. Uh, it's gonna form a, a septum, a split, um, from the cell periphery towards the center. And after the new cell walls form, the daughter cells separate. So this shares some similarity with what we've already seen, right? Um, so there's, there is some shared, uh, call it uh, homology here. So the precise formation and timing of the mitotic spindle were really crucial in eukaryotic cell division, where in prokaryotes, right, they don't, they don't undergo mitosis, so they don't require a mitotic spindle, but they share, they have this protein called uh, FTSZ fits, um, which is essential for prokaryotic cytokinesis. Remember the part where we split them apart finally. Um, that protein shares some structural and functional similarities with tubulin. Um, so FITS proteins assemble in this ring-like structure. They're gonna initiate a partition between the nucleoids and prokaryotes. Um, this ring formation triggers the recruitment of other proteins that bring new membrane and cell wall materials to the site. Uh, FITS, like tubulin, is gonna use um, GTP, uh, guanosine triphosphate, uh, as an energy source to rapidly build and dismantle the complex structures. So fits and tubulin illustrate something we call homology, uh, indicating this common evolutionary origin. Uh, fits is believed to resemble the ancestral protein from which both modern fits and tubulin evolved. Uh, while both proteins exist in present day organisms, uh, tubulin has evolved significantly and diversified its functions since its prokaryotic fits origins. Um, studying cell division machinery in unicellular eukaryotes today has provided a lot of insight into these intermediate steps leading to a complex mitotic machinery, uh, up to the complex mitotic machinery we, that we see in multicellular eukaryotes. So if you ever hear someone say, why are we studying that in bacteria? That's why we see all sorts of interesting things that can give us pictures into what the earliest forms of some of these proteins might have looked like. All right. Uh, thank you again for joining me for chapter six. 
Uh, we looked at reproduction at the cellular level for eukaryotes and prokaryotes. And I really hope to see you back here for chapter seven, where we're gonna dig into cellular inheritance.